<laughs> Almost kind of sounds like the guy's taking a crap or something. He's just, he's constipated. <laughs> Hey guys, CS here. How's it going? Welcome to today's Let's Play of Netstorm, Islands at War. Now this is uh, a little lesser known real-time strategy game from 1997, developed by Titanic Entertainment and published by Activision. It was designed to be like a massive multiplayer online game, uh, but there is single player mode as well. I played this so much, I cannot tell you how much I played this game. I played it so much, especially around 2004 when they had some, when the main servers went offline and they had fan servers set up I played this to death so let's get right into uh, let's go right into demo mode here and uh, so I'll have something playing I'm just gonna briefly read what the general storyline is because it's kind of hard to understand what the heck is going on here otherwise uh, it's a bit of an it's an odd game and if you know me by now or if you've seen the rest of my videos you know I do enjoy odd games uh, and this one is absolutely no exception. It's not like other RTS games. There's very few moving units. Basically, it's almost like you're placing chess pieces on a board and they, you know, interactively fight with each other. Netstorm takes place in the world of Nimbus, a planet whose crust has been sent floating off into the atmosphere by the never-ending battles between the three godlike beings called the Furies, representing wind, rain, and thunder. There's also sun as well. Uh, but that's not mentioned here. The people now live on small floating islands, each with its own high priest. They're only linked to their patron fury. The islands battle each other in order to capture and sacrifice the priests of their enemies to their to their own fury. So that's what this game is about: is basically capturing the enemy priest. Um, where's the priest? Here's here's an example of a high priest. Your objective is to immobilize him, capture him, and sacrifice him to the gods so you can gain more knowledge and power. So this is just a demo more where I can, you know, help my island fight to victory. Um, just kind of it just kind of keeps on going. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff to explain. There's a lot of different units in this game. It's really cool. I'm going to get right into the campaign mode, though. That is just where... I think we should start off. So we're going to start the Struggle for Freedom campaign. I'm only going to do the first few missions here. Let's we'll start with The War Begins. Um, you guys can pause that if you want to read the, um, the debriefing, but I'm just going to get right into the gameplay. So now basically, I have to start by... This is my island. It has a temple on it. And i got to start by collecting resources called Storm Power. Uh, basically, the amount of Storm Power I've collected is displayed in the upper left. And... Um, it's very important that you collect a whole lot of storm power because storm power allows you to build units and buildings. And another really important aspect of this game is bridging. Now you'll see I'm, pl I'm placing bridges um, and in the upper left hand corner are the available bridges that I can place. Now most people, some people starting out might, you know, uh, they might use their mouse to select bridges, but that takes forever. And quick bridging in this game is really critical. So I'm using the shortcut keys W A S Z X to get bridges or to select bridges quickly. And um, okay, so in order to be able, so this is this is the bridge I have uh, out towards the enemy base. I'm actually going to sneak around the back. <laughs> I'm going to cut him off. See, he's trying to place his own bridges. And the faster bridger you are, the easier this game is, pretty much. So I need to start building a sun workshop. Basically, you can build a work... Oh, I can't fit it there. Okay, I build a workshop right there. Workshop allows you to put knowledge into production. So basically, I'm going to put a few different pieces of knowledge into production once I get this workshop up. So the priest is walking over. He's going to uh, synthesize <laughs> the sun workshop on my island and uh, then we'll get started. I'm going to start by attacking some of these sun disk throwers in the front and you can actually, you can right click on any item in the, oh wow, okay that's in range of a sun disk thrower, that's that's not good. Anyway, we're gonna put rain generator into production and, oh we only have sun cannons, okay, well that's fine. So basically, the temple emits energy, it's emitting rain energy specifically, so I need to extend the range of that energy. And then I have to, now I have an, an energy range sufficient to be able to place these cannons. Basically, when you place units in the game, they need to have, be within the range of energy. And they also cost storm power as well. 
Um, I'm just going to let those two cans do their work because that should be enough. In the meantime, I'm going to uh, extend my range of energy over here. And we're going to sneak our way all the way to the back and destroy the temple. So this is what I was talking about. There's splash damage in the game. So when you have a, like a, a there, wow, yeah, see? That's, that's what I'm talking about. Splash damage. You don't want to be placing a lot of your offensive units close together because then that'll happen. So we also have another, uh, we can put a whirly base into production, but honestly, I don't think I'm even going to need whirly bases. I could probably do this entire thing with a load of sun cannons. So here we go. Uh, basically, when you construct a unit in this game, you have to wait for its energy to come all the way from the temple in order for it to be synthesized. Okay, I'm gonna get as many cannons back here as I can. And then we're going to capture his high priest. You can just barely see his priest hiding out behind the temple there. So once this temple explodes, it's gonna create... Um, basically, it's gonna immobilize everything around it, and that's gonna include his priest. So. I don't even have to destroy the rest of the stuff on the island. I just gotta make sure I get the priest. Ho oh, ho, look at that temple flaming. It's about to explode. And... Boom! Okay, awesome. So now his, the priest is immobilized. So we get to pick up the priest uh, using a, a golem. By the way, these little transports are called golems. And uh, I'm going to use the golem to go ahead and pick up the priest. Yes, master. <laughs> oh crap. Uh, my golem might get destroyed if... Yeah, ha! That happened. Oh well. Let's make sure we uh, keep the priest immobilized. Let's grab another golem. That can't happen. Okay, great. So now we're going to bring the priest back to the altar. And then we're going to perform a sacrificial ritual. So here we go, the, the enemy priest is now chained to the altar, so we're going to select our priest and begin the sacrifice. So, so he basically sacrifices the priest in the name of all the furies. He does for the sun, for the wind, for the rain, for the thunder, and then lastly for the storm. Oh, the storm. It is done. <laughs> and there is the sacrifice and the uh, the win of this mission. Only with many leaders behind you can the powers of darkness be overthrown and destroyed. All right, well, let's continue overthrowing the powers of darkness on the next mission. So now we are fighting the master of whirligigs. Let's go ahead and get it started. Get some golems collecting storm power as usual. There is quite an extensive tech tree in this game, um, but when you first start out in these missions, you only have access to kind of the more primitive sun units. I'm going to go ahead and get a Sun Workshop going, yet again. I'm going to be kind of cutting this guy off a bit. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, fast bridging in this game is pretty critical. Okay, so I'm upgrading my Sun Workshop, and that allows me to insert one uh, more piece of knowledge into production. So, okay, we're going to extend the range of this, we're going to put it put out some sun disk throwers to battle these whirligigs. Now, this is a whirligig base, and they produce these little flying things called whirligigs, which can attack you from a wide range. If you select a building, or you select a unit, you can see its range. You see they have range all the way out to there. So, I'm basically going to be, I'm also, also going to be attacking uh, his temple. He's just going to keep firing back with whirligigs. Let's see, we get, I need more, see I'm running low on storm power. Uh, so when you're not, when you don't have enough storm power to build something, the stuff uh, listed on the, your units listed on the left become uh, redded out because you don't have enough storm power to build it. So our, our battle is well underway here. And once you know how to play the game, it's really fun. It just takes a lot of practice to get good. I mean, <laughs> gee, what game doesn't take practice to, to get good at? 
CS. <laughs> and you also you also get uh, storm power bonuses for when you destroy enemy units. So I get a specific percentage of what that unit costs to build added to my storm power when I destroy an enemy unit. And I know a lot of this might not be making a lot of sense. I just I love getting into the technicalities because I absolutely love this game. I've played it for almost 20 years now, so it's just a really really special part of me. And that temple is about to explode yet again. Uh, just two more hits should do it. Boom! <laughs> and you'll notice the whole island changes color. This means that the enemy player no longer has ownership of this island. It is now a neutral island. So it means I can go ahead and place units on his island now. Uh, without any repercussion. So now it's time to capture this high priest as well. Let's go ahead and get a, get a golem out here. Pick him up as I completely overtake the island with the uh, sun disk throwers here. <laughs> Almost kind of sounds like the guy's taking a crap or something. He's just, he's constipated. <laughs> Success! You have defended your people brilliantly against this vicious and brutal attack. <laughs> it was really neither of those things. All right, time to uh, save the island, apparently. Let's, uh, we need to help save the ambassador's island. The ambassador of Hydrus. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, oh, he's under, oh, he's under attack by a massive force of thunder cannons. And those things are loud. They are very loud. When in large groups like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some, uh, you know what? A whirl of base might be a good idea here. That way we can attack from a distance. Wow, I, <laughs> that was not a good bridging attempt. Uh, sometimes you just can't get the right... A lot of it is uh, trying to get the right pieces when bridging, and sometimes you just don't get the right pieces that you need. Um, wow, okay, that's a pretty terrible connection of the bridge, but let's just go with it. And we are very lucky we have this sun barricade here to protect the main uh, base for the time being. So while I'm waiting for resources to come in, I'm just going to keep building out bridges here. Oh man, this, this guy's uh, base is quite far away. We're going to have to really bid bridge outward. Alright, so I'm upgrading the, uh, the sun workshop, and then we're going to put a sun cannon into production. The great thing about bridging in this game is that it's free. Building bridges is completely free. Alright, let's get more sun cannons firing here. All right, so we are slowly taking apart his offensive line of thunder cannons. And now we're beginning to uh, attack his island here. Of course, you can see I did a lot of, a lot of bridge building already. But um, yeah, let's, let's keep it up here. And now we're just overwhelming him with really good bases at this point. Oh man, I, I absolutely love this game. Like I said before, it's kind of like playing a game of chess in the sky. Let's prepare our around the back attack. <laughs> yep, at, th at this point the island is ours. No question about it. Also, I love some of these transport units. Like this this one is uh, aligned with thunder. It's called the Bulf. <laughs> I, um... Uh, yeah, I, I love these units. And I should have been showing some of these um, statistics screens all along probably because it gives you a um, complete rundown of uh, each of the unit specs. Now the reason it's taking so long to destroy these is these are bulwarks. Uh, they are essentially very heavy defense towers. Alright, there we go. The priest is immobilized. I'm bringing a golem over to capture it so I can get my sacrifice and get tons more knowledge. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry again about my uh, my green screen, guys. <laughs> my uh, It's actually a very cloudy day. I have hardly enough light to be able to uh, have the green screen. I, I really should get a proper green screen kit, and that is on my to-do list. So this game does still have multiplayer servers up and running uh, sporadically. There's a very, very small user community still active for this game, so it is possible to play this online with you guys uh, if you're interested in doing that. All right, there's our sacrifice. And the temple is about to go boom. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I actually love the building and unit explosion animation in this. It's like it basically pops, like it, it shatters like glass or ceramic. It's it's really cool. All right, so that concludes mission three of the campaign, and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a longer mission, so I cut a lot of segments out, but uh, still really not uh, too difficult. Your military acumen is now the stuff of legend. Alright, so there's a bunch more missions I could play, but I'm going to leave this video here. Uh, this one is another one which could take quite a while. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. And uh, until next time, this is CS, signing out.